Hare Krishna, dear devotees. On behalf of Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada, I would like to welcome all of you for our day two of Katha based on Srimad Bhagavatam, Deliverance of Putra. As Prabhuji mentioned, curiosity kills the cat, the cat of the material world. So, let us become curious to read and hear from Srimad Bhagavatam so that the cat of the attachment to this material world can be killed. And as Prabhuji mentioned, page by page, let's become sage. Before we age, escape the cage. So with that, I'd like to request Samrana Prabhu to begin today's Katha. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shabakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthavitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Hiyam Dadati Svapadantikam Namaum Vishnupadaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarane Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gauru Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare We want to welcome all of the devotees who are kindly participating and joining in today's discussion of Srimad Bhagavatam. As we discussed and decided, we will start off by chanting the verses of the 6th chapter of the 10th canto. We will read about 20-21 verses uh, for the next few days, I would say about two weeks, and then the remaining two weeks, we will chant the second half of the chapter. So, Prabhuji, you can kindly screen share, and then we will get started. Shri Shukha Uvacha Nandaha Pathi Vacha Shorer Namrisheti Vichintayan Harim Jagama Sharanam Utpatagama Shankitaha Kamsena Prahita Ghora Putana Balaghatini Shishum Shachara Nignanti Puragram of Rajadishu Nayatra Shravanadini Rakrognani Swakaramasu Kurvanti Satvatam Hartur Yatudhanyas Chatrahi Sakhe Chari Kotot Patya Putananda Gokulam Yoshitwa Maya Yatmanam Pravishat Kamacharini Tam Kesha Bandha Vyatishakta Malikam Brihan Nitambastana Kritramadhyamam Suvasa Samkal Pitakarana Bhushanat Vishola Sat Kuntala Manditananam Can we move ahead, Prabhuji? Balgusmita panga visarga vikrita irmano harantim vanitam brajokasam asam amam satam ho jakare narupinim gopya shriam drashtumivagatam patim Balagrahas tatra vichinvati shishun yadrichayanan the grihe sadantakam Balam pratichanani joru tejasam dadar shatal pegnimivahitam pasi Vibudhyatam balakamari kagraham chara charatmas sani milite kranaha Anantamaro payadankamantakam yatho rugam suptama buddhi rajudhi Tam tikshna chittam ativam acheshtitam Vikshantara rosha parichada siva Varastriam tat prabhayacha dharshite Nirikshyamane janani yatishtatam Tasminstanam durjaraviriam ulbanam Gorankamada yashishor dadavitha Gadam karabhyam bhagavan prapidyatat Pranay samam rosha samam vitopi bad Samuncha munjalam iti prabhashini Nishpid yamana kila jiba marmani Vivritya netre charano puja muhu Praswin nagatra kripati ruroduha Tasya swanena tigabhira ramhasa Sadrir mahid yaushcha chachala sagraha Rasadishascha pratine direjana Petu kshitau vajranipata shankaya Nisha charitam Vyatitam stana vyasur Vyada yakesham charano bhujavapi 
प्रसार्य गोष्ठे निज रूप मास्तिता वज्राहतो वृत्र इवा पतनृप पतमानोपि तदेहस त्रिगव्युत्यंतरद्रुमान चूर्णया मास राजेंद्र महदासी तदद्भुत ईशा मात्रोग्रदम श्रास्यम गिरीकंदर नासिक गंडशैलस्तन रौद्रम प्रकीर्णारुण मूर्धज अंधकूप गभीराक्ष पुलिनारोहभीषम बद्ध सेतु भुजारंग्री शून्य तोय हृदोदरम can keep moving prabhu santatrastu sma tad vikshya gopa gopya kalevaram purvam tu tannisvanita can move the english hari krishna prabhu yeah thank you bhinna rit karana mastaka balam chatasya urasi kridantam makuto bhayam गोप्यस्तूर्णम समभ्येत्य जग्रहु जात संभ्रमा यशोदा यशोदारोहिणीभ्यांता समं बालस्य सर्वतः रक्षां विदधिरे सम्य गोपुच्छ भ्रमणाधिभि गोमूत्रेण स्नापयित्वा पुनर्गोरज सार्भकं रक्षां चक्रुश्च शाकृता द्वादशांगेषु नामभि गोप्य संस्पृष्ट सलिला अंगेशु करयो पृथक न्यस्यात्मन बालस्य बीज न्यासमकुर्वत हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वेलकम एवरीवन थैंक यू फॉर एंथुजियास्टिकली चैंटिंग द फर्स्ट हाफ ऑफ द चैप्टर द चैंटिंग ऑफ द वर्सेस ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम आर एक्सट्रीमली प्यूरिफाइंग कृष्ण तुल्य भागवत विभु सर्वाश्रय प्रति श्लोके प्रति अक्षरे नाना अर्थे कय महाप्रभु टोल शिल रूप गोस्वामी that the 12 cantos of shrimad bhagavatam are non different from krishna and every verse in fact even half a verse in fact even one line in fact even one word in fact every syllable prati shloke prati akhare every akshar nana arthe kai they have so many beautiful wonderful meanings and paramanand pathaya prema varshi aksharayate सर्वदा सर्व सेव्याय श्री कृष्णाय नमोस्तु मे श्रीला सनातन गोस्वामी इन द ग्लोरिफिकेशन ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम हैज वेरी ब्यूटिफुली डिस्क्राइब्ड दट परम आनंद पाठाय दैट टेक्स्ट बाय स्टडिंग विच बाय रिसाइटिंग द वर्सेस ऑफ होम परम आनंद प्रदायी ने वी वी रिसीव ग्रेट जॉय वेरी ग्रेट जॉय इन जस्ट रीडिंग द वर्सेस एक्सट्रीम जुबिलेशन इन द हार्ट परम आनंद पाठाय प्रेम वर्ष अक्षराय थे एवरी सिलेबल इज लाइक अ क्लाउड व्हिच इज रेनिंग प्रेम कृष्ण प्रेम व्हिच मींस जस्ट बाय रीडिंग श्रीमद् भागवतम वन विल फॉल इन लव विद कृष्ण एंड डेवलप अ कृष्ण सेवा वासना कृष्ण सेवा वासना वासना मींस डिजायर एंड सेवा मींस सर्विस वन विल डेवलप द डिजायर टू सर्व कृष्ण just by studying shrimad bhagavatam so parama ananda pathaya prema varshya kshrayate sarvada sarva sevyaya shri krishnaya namostume therefore at all times all living entities are expected to serve krishna by serving shrimad bhagavatam we understand there are 64 limbs of bhakti we understand performing ekadashi and worshiping tulsi etc these are very wonderful ways to make spiritual advancement but there are top 5 ways by which we can make spiritual advancement and one out of those five is bhagavata shravan to hear shrimad bhagavatam shila rupa goswami pad has written it in sanskrit in shri bhakti rasamrita sindhu and our very beloved krishnadas kaviraj goswami pad in his chaitanya charitamrit has said sadhu sang naam kirtan bhagavata shravan मथुरावास श्रीमूर्तिर श्रद्धया सेवन दैट बाय असोसिएटिंग विद द ग्रेट सोल्स साधु संग नाम कीर्तन बाय चैंटिंग द होली नेम्स भागवत श्रवण बाय स्टडिंग श्रीमद् भागवतम 
Mathura Vas by residing in Mathura and Shri Murti Shraddhaya Sevan and by worshipping the deities with great uh, honor and affection. These are the five top ways by which we can make spiritual advancement. So we can make our endeavor that every day we will associate with the devotees, especially those who are more advanced than us, so that in their association we can gain Krishna consciousness. We should chant Japa and do Kirtan. Second, third, we should make an effort to read Srimad Bhagavatam and hear Krishna Katha. And fourth, Mathuravas. Now, it is difficult to live in Mathura while living at home. But there is one way by which we can live in Mathura while living at home. And that is by taking shelter of Brinda Devi, Tulsa Devi. We know that Brindavan is uh, Brinda Yahavana. It is the forest of Brinda Devi. And Vrinda manifests in this world as Tulsi. Tavaiva Murtis Tulasi Indriloke. Vrinda Devi has come as Tulasi in this world. So by uh, having Tulsi at home, all of us must worship Tulsi. That home which doesn't have Tulsi, Krishna doesn't live there. So we should all make sure that we take shelter of Tulsi in multiple ways. By always having Tilak marked on our forehead at least but ideally 12 parts of our body, if not at least the forehead to start with. Tulsi here through Tilak, Tulsi on the Kantha as Kantimala, and then Tulsi beads to chant, and Tulsi leaves to offer to Krishna, Tulsi plant to water and circumambulate, and in always taking shelter of Tulsi Devi, Brinda Devi. Um, wherever she grows, where her base touches the, the, the root, touches the mud, that is Brindavan. <laughs> and that mud is the dust of Braja. Because Tulsi doesn't grow anywhere except Brindavan. It is her forest. So wherever she's growing, that must be Brindavan. <laughs> so by taking some dust from the root of Tulsi Devi on our head, by circumambulating Tulsi as plant, watering Tulsi Devi, offering prayers to Tulsi, this is taking shelter of Brindavan while living outside of Vrindavan. And Shri Murtira Shraddhaya Sevan, by worshipping the deity of Krishna, we make spiritual advancement. These are the top five ways by which we can make advancement. But why we are mentioning that is because in this context, Bhagavat Shravan is very, very important. Anybody who studies Srimad Bhagavatam, read Srimad Bhagavatam, hear Srimad Bhagavatam, they will definitely, definitely make spiritual advancement. If you hear Srimad Bhagavatam from someone who has desire for uh, making money or showing their scholarship or impressing people or um, any ulterior agenda, then what will happen is uh, that desire will rise in the heart of the listener. So it is our duty to make sure that we hear Srimad Bhagavatam from the right source. Um, there will be so many people speaking Srimad Bhagavatam uh, outside the parampara, even inside the parampara. And we should respect everyone. And if we are in a situation where we have to, we are sitting in an assembly where we are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, definitely we should hear Srimad Bhagavatam. But our preference naturally should be to hear Srimad Bhagavatam from the purest source possible. Hmm? Avaishnava Mukhodgirnam Putam Hari Kathamritam Shravanam Naiva Kartavyam Sarpo Chishtayatapaya. That milk is very nourishing to the body. However, when we taste milk, which has been tasted by the, the lips of a snake, then that whole milk, although it is very nourishing, now becomes poisonous. So Krishna Katha is like milk which nourishes the soul. Just like roti sabji dal rice nourishes the body. Similarly, Krishna Katha, Krishna Kirtan nourishes the soul. But when it is heard from the lips of someone who has ulterior agenda, then hearing that Krishna Katha uh, will definitely have effect. We will definitely make spiritual advancement, no doubt about it. But those weeds may grow in our heart as well. Because we become like the persons whom we hear from. <laughs> so therefore, we all should make it a point that apart from hearing our spiritual masters and superiors, we hear Srila Prabhupada every day uh, as much as possible. These sound vibrations are preserved for all times to come. 
sometimes i have heard devotees say that oh uh, but this i have but this i already know Srila Prabhupada is explaining about Ajamil, but this I already know. But it is not so much about the information that we have. It is about the transformation that comes with that information. If we know a lot, but if our heart is not getting transformed, then what is the point? Then what is the point? Information will be there in the head, but the heart is not transforming. Instead, we hear, even if it is simple information that we have already heard, it is still fruitful to sit and hear it again because this vibration will bring in transformation. One time, uh, Srila Prabhupada had given Brahmin initiation, hmm, Mantra Diksha, to one devotee, and he was awarded the Brahmin thread, the sacred thread. And that evening, Srila Prabhupada was giving a public class and there was an audio recorder which was uh, there on the stand the mic stand and somehow time and again it was slipping down and falling so Srila Prabhupada asked the devotee can you tie this together to the stand and the devotee said I, do, I don't have uh, a rubber band an elastic rubber band to put it together Srila Prabhupada said take your Brahmin thread off and tie this recorder to the stand <laughs> And the devotee did, as Prabhupada said. Now, someone coming from a um, conservative Brahminical approach will think, what is going on? <laughs> when in history of mankind was Brahmin thread removed to tie an audio recorder to a mic stand? Right? Someone from a conservative Brahminical background will think like that. And surely enough, that is true. In the past, it has never been done. But if you think from a uh, broad-minded Vaishnava perspective, greater than Brahmanatva is Vaishna, Vaishnavatva, the quality of being the devotee and servant of Krishna. Prabhupada's mood was, this recorder is catching sound vibration and this will help mankind for all times to come. Uh, the perfection of chanting Gayatri Mantra with the thumb wrapped around the uh, sacred um, under the sacred cloth and wrapped around the Brahmin thread, the perfection is in serving Shri Guru and helping Shri Guru propagate the mission of Krishna far and wide. So from that perspective, uh, this was perfectly fine. And this has been quoted in one of the books that I recently read. So the point is, transcendental sound vibration. Very, very important. Jao Bhagavata Pado Vaishnavirasthane Ekanta Ashraya Koro Chaitanya Charane Chaitanya Bhaktagana Nityakara Sangha Tabeta Janiya Siddhanta Samudra Taranga. Our Swarup Damodar Goswami in Chaitanya Charitamrit has described that Bhagavatam must be studied. Jao Bhagavata Pada Vaishnava Rasthani. Go study Srimad Bhagavatam at the feet of an advanced Vaishnava. Ekanta Ashraya Koro Chaitanya Charane and take one pointed shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? <clears throat> And Chaitanya Bhaktagana Nitya Karo Sangha and daily associate with the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Tabita Janiya Siddhanta Samudra Taranga. Only then we can understand the ocean of Siddhanta. Siddhanta means philosophical conclusion. Why is it said that we should take shelter of a devotee in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Because nobody understands Krishna like Srimati Radharani understands. And Srimad Bhagavatam is Krishna. So therefore, nobody understands Srimad Bhagavatam like Radharani. Even Krishna doesn't understand as much as Radharani because it takes devotion to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. And therefore, to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna took the bhava of Radharani and came as Shachinandan Gauruhari so that he can sit with Gadadhar Pandit, who is Radharani, and study Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit at Tota Gopinath. You see, Krishna also desired to study Srimad Bhagavatam. And he understands as Krishna, he cannot. Only a devotee can understand. And the greatest devotee is Radharani. And therefore, taking shelter of Radha's bhav and Radha's kanti, Krishna comes as Mahaprabhu and still studies Srimad Bhagavatam from Radharani's lotus lips. And Radharani manifests in this world as Gadadhar Pandit. So Gadadhar Pandit is speaking and Nimai Pandit is listening. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is listening. All of this at the lotus feet of Radha Gopinath or Totu Gopinath. 
in Jagannath Puri. So the reason I am mentioning all this is because I am not a proper source from whom Srimad Bhagavatam should be heard. Srimad Bhagavatam should ideally be heard from a very advanced Vaishnav. And I am not an advanced Vaishnav. I am not even a Vaishnav. So uh, those who wish, uh, hearing this, you can feel free to drop out of the, uh, the session. I am simply saying this, that we should hear uh, Vaishnavas. Yes, we should hear Srimad Bhagavatam wherever it's going on. But when it is coming from the lips of a very advanced Vaishnav, it is all purifying. And the bhav, the devotion in which they speak is infused in our heart as well. So I don't claim to be that caliber. But however, um, please pray for me so that um, I better in my intention, I better in my consciousness. And whatever I have heard from the lips of my superiors my Guru Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada and Srila Guru Maharaj, uh, Srila Prabhupada's dear disciples and leaders of the International Society of Krishna Consciousness and the predecessor Acharyas, uh, whatever comes our way, uh, like your servant, uh, being in the mood of your servant, I will simply try to share. If anybody gets benefited, uh, you can kindly uh, pass on your gratitude to our Parampara Acharyas. But at the same time, you can offer some blessings to me. I can wholeheartedly accept your blessings because that will help me make advancement. So with that disclaimer, offering our obeisances to Sri Vyasadev, the compiler, Srila Shukadev Goswami, the primary speaker, Parikshit Maharaj, the primary listener, Narada Muni, whose inspiration brought in Srimad Bhagavatam, Suta Goswami, the speaker, Shaunakadi Rishi, the listeners at Naimasharanya, all the wonderful devotees described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Shachinandan Gaurahari, the six Goswamis, and all the commentators in the Gaudiya Parampara, and coming to our very beloved Srila Prabhupada, who translated all of this in English, and the disciples of Srila Prabhupada, uh, and our Priya Gurujan, the lotus feet of our beloved spiritual masters, by whose mercy this Parampara comes to this earth till this very day. I offer my obeisances to all of them. My special gratitude to Radha Madan Mohan, the presiding deities of ISKCON Atlanta, and all the management and wonderful Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. With that as our introduction, we would like to um, start our discussion on the 10th canto. One chakalpa tarubhya chakrapa sindubhya evacha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha. Text 1. This is canto 10, chapter 6, text 1. Shri Shukha Uvacha Nandaha Pathi Vachaha Shaure Namrusheti Vichintayan Harim Jagama Sharanam Utpatagama Shankitaha. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Shukadev Goswami continued My dear king, while Nanda Maharaj was on the way home, he considered that what Vasudev has had said could not be false or useless. There must have been some danger of disturbance in Gokul. As Nanda Maharaj thought about the danger for his beautiful son Krishna, he was afraid and he took shelter at the lotus feet of the Supreme Controller. Just to give a little bit of context and then we'll continue to the purport of Srila Prabhupada. The connection between the fifth chapter and the start of the sixth chapter is as follows. As we know, in the third chapter and the fourth chapter, of the 10th canto, Krishna's appearance and the great celebration of Nandotsava has been described. Now, as we all understand, six children of Devaki were mercilessly killed by Kamsa. The seventh child was a miscarriage, seems like, but it was actually Anantashesh who appeared the womb of Devaki to cleanse the womb because as we know, the six children who appeared are called as the Shad Garbhasur. Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mad, Matsarya. The six enemies of the soul, lust, anger, greed, pride, etc. They appeared as these six children. <laughs> and therefore they were killed. Now what has happened is, the womb of Devaki, which was the resting place for these six Anarthas, has become contaminated by their presence. So therefore, Anantashesh, as the seventh child, enters the womb of Devaki to cleanse the womb and prepare the sitting place for the eighth child, Krishna, to appear. 
because Krishna will appear only in a purified place. So after the six children have appeared and they have um, contaminated the womb, Anantashesh appears, he cleanses, cleanses the womb. But after he cleanses the womb, he doesn't belong there. He should appear from the womb of Rohini, who is the eternal mother for Balaram. So Anantashesh, who appears in the womb of Devaki, transfers himself into the womb of Rohini. And therefore, he is called Shankarshana. Sankarshana means he who was akrishta, who was attracted from one womb to another. And Rohini Nandan Balaram was already present in Rohini's womb. So the Anantashesh from the womb of Devaki got transferred into the womb of Rohini and merged into that Balaram and became one. And then that is the Balaram who appeared from Rohini. And then the eighth child entered uh, through the mind of uh, Vasudev. Um, or the heart of Vasudev, to the mind and to the womb of uh, um, Devakirani. And in this way, we can see Krishna appeared in this world, teaching us two lessons. The first lesson is, if we take shelter of Anantashesh, that is Shri Guru in our life, then the six Anarthas that we are struggling with will all be killed in time. And also the second lesson is, if we take shelter of Shri Guru, then it is only a matter of time for Krishna to appear in our lives. Very soon, Krishna will appear. May not appear from our womb, but will definitely appear in our heart. He will appear in full potency and manifest his presence in our life. So now as Krishna appeared in the womb and he appeared in person in a four-handed form, he instructed his parents after recalling their past lives. Think about it. Children in this world, they appear. And uh, if they don't cry after appearance, after their birth, then the doctor, you know, <laughs> gives them a little pat uh, to make them cry. Because when the child starts to cry, he starts taking his breath in this world. <laughs> and then he becomes healthy because the child has been breathing in the womb. So now when there's a pat, he starts breathing in <laughs> and it fills up his lungs. And that's how he becomes healthy in this world. So the child appears in this world with cry. That's the auspicious appearance of children in this world. And they're smeared with stool and urine and blood all over, all over the place without clothes. That's the welcome that we get in this world. But however, when Krishna appeared, he didn't cry. He was smiling and looking at him, his parents also smiled. Krishna is Ananda Murti. Ananda Murti means he is the abode of joy. And anyone and everyone who thinks about him who glances at his deity and chants his holy name, they also become filled with joy. Therefore, if we want to be happy, Prabhupada said, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So Krishna on appearance with his very beautiful, um, majestic form in his four-handed form, he instructed his parents about their past lives, informed them about their past lives, how they had been worshipping um, Krishna over lifetimes uh, <clears throat> with the desire to have Krishna as their child. And naturally, Krishna appeared three incarnations as their child. First as Prashni Garbha, then as Vamana, and now as Vasudev or Devaki Nandan Krishna. Then after that, Krishna told his parents that he would want to be transferred from Mathura to Gokul Mahavan. He wants to move to Vrindavan. And therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam also describes that uh, after Krishna appeared, uh, this is also described in the 11th canto. And uh, our beloved Acharyas have, um, Srila Jiva Goswami has commented to a very famous verse in the 11th canto found in the 5th chapter, Dhyayam sada paribhavagnam abhishtadoham tirthaspadam shiva virinchinutam sharanyam brityartiham pranatapala bhavabdhipotam vande maha purushate charanaravindam. Hmm, this verse and the verse next after this. Both these verses, Tyaktvas sudustyaja surepsita raja lakshmim dharmishta arya vachasa yadagadaranyam maya mrgam dayita yepsita man vadhavat vande maha purushate charanaravindam. Especially this second verse that we quoted. This is the 33rd and the 34th verse of the 5th chapter of the 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam. So in the second verse that we quoted, Srila Jiva Goswami Pad writes that um, Krishna, 
Tyaktva su dustya ja surepsi ta rajya lakshmi. Giving up the throne of Mathura where Krishna appeared. Dharmishtha, out of prema dharma, out of love for the Prajvasis. What did Krishna do? Arya vachasa yadagad aranyam. He went back to the aranya. Which forest? Vrindaranyam. He went back to the forest of Vrindavan. And what did he do there? Mayam rigam dayita yepsitam anvadhavat. Becoming a stuffed toy. Became, becoming a play toy in the hand of the Brajbasis. He was running here, there, everywhere out of love. <laughs> and his mother was running behind him with a whipping stick. One day, Mahapurushate Charanaravindam, at the lotus feet of that great Mahapurusha Sri Krishna, I take shelter. So that is the verse. And we are mentioning that because Krishna, after appearing in the prison house of Mathura, he told his parents to transfer him. So then surely enough, as we know, the very famous story that is said, many times and has been seen maybe in Little Krishna and other <laughs> other episodes like that. I haven't watched, but I have heard uh, they show these things. So, <laughs> so Vasudev Maharaj carries Krishna from Mathura crossing the Jamuna into the house of Nanda Maharaj and he swaps Krishna with the baby girl, brings the baby girl back to the prison house and when Kamsa gets to know, Kamsa comes and flings the baby girl in the sky. And she, that little girl, kicks Kamsa on the head <laughs> and appears in a very wonderful eight-handed um, form of Durga Devi and instructs Kamsa that the person you're trying to search for is actually, has already appeared somewhere else and is being nourished with affection. So this gives us a very wonderful insight. Please understand, dear devotees, Durga Devi. Hmm? Uh, Srishti Stiti Pralaya Sadhana Shakti Reka Chayeva Yesya Bhuvanani Bibarti Durga Ichanu Rupa Mapiasya Tacheshta Te Sa Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. In the Brahma Samhita, it is described that Durga Devi she follows Krishna like shadow. When a person walks, the shadow also follows. It doesn't happen that the shadow is left behind and the person is walking. Therefore, Durga Devi is a very powerful representative. She's called Durga. Uh, Durg. Durg means a prison house. Ga means gamanam in Sanskrit, to leave, to walk. And Dur means difficult. So that prison house, which is very difficult to break and leave, is called Durga. That is this world. And she is the fortress. She is the jailer. She is the, pris the prison caretaker. So therefore, in the feminine usage, Durga becomes Durga. She is the taker, uh, the caretaker of this whole material world. She is Bhavani. Uh, she is Bhavani. Bhava is Lord Shiva and Bhavani uh, is the wife of Lord Shiva. Therefore, you may have heard words like Bhavani, Shivani, right? Shivani is you know very popular name for girls given in India. That's another name for Mother Parvati. Shiva is Lord Shiva and Bhava is Lord Shiva. So Bhavani Similarly, Shivani, the, the wife of Lord Shiva. So Durga Devi is very powerful representative. And we can see when she was a baby girl, she attracted uh, Vasudev Maharaj towards Krishna. Of course, he had Vishnu Krishna here, but Krishna Krishna as the son of Nanda Maharaj was there. So by her potency as Yoga Maya, she got Vasudev Maharaj in the middle of the night crossing the Jamuna to her beloved Krishna at Nanda Maharaj's home. And yet at the same time, when there is no devotion, she kicks on the head <laughs> and takes the form with weapons for Kamsa. So depending on our Yadrishi Bhavana Yasya Siddhir Bhavati Tadrishi, depending on our mood, the demigods can benedict us. Hmm? When um, the gopis approached Durga Devi, Katyayani Mahamaye Mahayogin Yadhishwari Nanda Gopa Sutam Devi Patim Me Kurute Namaha. Then th through the Katyayani Vrat, the same Durga Devi was benedicting the gopis to get Krishna as their husband. But when the mood is not devotional, um, we are going around killing goat and killing animals and giving in charity uh, the lives of these animals at the feet of Durga Devi, as it is done in many villages till the very present day. Very unfortunate. Which mother would like to see the dripping of the blood of her own children? Who is that mother in the whole creation who would like to drink wine and alcohol? So it's unfortunate when people 
um, sacrifice the lives of innocent, pu um, pure-hearted animals uh, at the feet of Durga, think thinking that it's going to please her or give the offering of wine and alcohol, thinking that it'll please her. She's actually a devotee of Krishna. She's a loving mother. She's Jagan Mata. She's the mother of the whole creation. And if your and my heart also melts looking at the pain inflicted in the lives of animals, won't the heart of Durga Devi melt with compassion? So the point here is when there is devotion, as Yoga Maya, she attracts us to the feet of Krishna. And when there is no devotion, as Maha Maya, she kicks us on the head and makes us suffer in this world. So Maya is not bad, depending on what form she takes. The energy of the Lord either brings us close to Krishna or takes us away from Krishna. Just like the same electricity uh, can heat up something in the form of a microwave oven or can cool down something in the form of a refrigerator. Can either heat up the room in the form of a heater or can cool down the room in the form of an air conditioner. It's the same electric potency which flips and gives opposite results. So similarly, it is parasya shaktir vividhai vashruyate. It's one energy of the Lord which either manifests as yoga maya taking us close to Krishna or as maha maya taking us away from Krishna. So now the question is, what is that yoga maya? That yoga maya is called Brinda Devi, Tulsi. <laughs> so by worshipping Tulsi, we will come close to Krishna. <laughs> and if we are not having devotional mood, then as Durga Devi, she will kick us on the head like she did to Kamsa Maharaj. So that's the lesson that we can learn from that piece of the story. Now let's continue. Um, as the story continues, we see Krishna is got to Nanda Gokul. And uh, it's important to note, and as we have mentioned, two Krishnas appeared. Uh, one Krishna, according to Gopal Champu of Srila Jiva Goswami, and according to enough Praman given in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada himself has mentioned in 1974, and I can share that quote also, that two Krishnas actually appeared. One Krishna was born to Nanda Maharaj, and one Krishna was born to Vasudev Maharaj. Vasudev and Devaki had Vasudev Krishna, the potency of Vishnu. And one Krishna, the original Krishna, the baby Krishna, the most naughty Krishna, uh, the sweetest, cutest Krishna appeared to Yashoda Devi and Nanda Baba. So when Krishna from Mathura was carried to Nanda Gokul, then the two Krishnas became one and Krishna in one form performed all the pastimes in Vrindavan. So all the killing that, that takes place, the killing of the demons that Yashoda's Krishna is not doing because he is only interested in breaking pots and eating butter and playing with his friends and eating mud and lying to his mother and running and crying for help. That is Yashoda's Krishna, the original Krishna. <laughs> and it is Vasudev Krishna, the Vishnu potency Krishna, who is Sashanka Chakram Sakirita Kundalam Sapita Vastram Sarasiru Hekshanam Sahara Vakshas Thalashobhikaustubam Namami Vishnum Shirasachatur Bhujam, who with his four hands and weapons is killing all the demons. That is the Vishnu potency. So whenever Putana, Trinavarta, Agasur, Bakasur, Denukasur are all destroyed, it is the Vishnu potency. The Vasudev Krishna who came from Mathura in the body of Yashoda Nandan, who is doing the killing. <laughs> and once the demon is gone, then Yashoda Krishna in full potency uh, starts taking credit. I was the one who killed the demon. And the friends are saying, no, no, you can't even properly lift a butter pot. You need our help. What demon can you kill? Huh? So therefore, Krishna gets very impressed by this pure-hearted love of the Brajbasis. Our Chaitanya Charitamrit has described, Shakale jagate more kare bidi bhakti, Bidi bhakti brajabhav paite nahi shakti. Aishwarya nanete shabha jagat mishrit. Aishwarya shithila prem nahi mora prit. Chira kale nahi diye prema bhakti dan. Prema bhakti bina nahi jagater avasthan. Prema rasa niryas korite aswadan. Rag mark bhakti loke korite pracharan. Apani na koila dharma shikhai na jaye. Eito siddhanta gita bhagavate ghai. Apani karimu bhakta bhavi angikar. Apani karimu bhakti shikhamu shavar. That the essence of all these verses are Krishna's thinking. And this comes from Chaitanya Charitamrit Adilila chapter 4. That Krishna is thinking that shakale jagate more kare vidi bhakti. The whole world is considering me to be God, which is true. 
and worshiping me because I am God. So they have some desires and their desires can be fulfilled only through God. And therefore they come to me to fulfill their desires. Krishna is saying, by this, you can't enter Brindavan. <laughs> if you worship Krishna as God uh, to fulfill your material desires, dhanam dehi, vittam dehi, dravinam dehi, vidya dehi, <laughs> give me what I want, uh, then where is pure-hearted devotion? Vidhi bhakti braja bhav paite nahi shakti. By this mood of ritualistic practice, it is not possible to attain the realm of braja. Krishna is saying, Aishwarya Nanite Shava Jagata Mishrit. The whole world is mixed with this conception that, oh, here is God, offer obeisances. If you don't worship him, you will go to hell. To save ourselves from going to hell, let us offer some agarbati. Krishna says, Nahi Mora Preet. I don't like this kind of worship. Then what kind of worship do you like, Krishna? Krishna says, Mora Putra, Mora Sakha, Mora Pranapati. Nectar. Bengali language is very nectarian. I am not a traditional Bengali speaker, but uh, this is the tongue of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the mother tongue of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Nectar is dripping, especially through Kaviraj Goswami's pen. Nectar is dripping. Hmm? Therefore, this is called Chaitanya Charita Amrita. <laughs> Chaitanya Charita Amrita Amritera Sindhu. <laughs> Kane Mana Tripto Hoy Tar Ek Bindu. Just by having one drop from this ocean of Chaitanya Charita Amrita, the heart and the ears become completely satisfied. So Kaviraj Goswami is saying in the words of Krishna, what kind of devotion traps the heart of Krishna, attracts the heart of Krishna? Mora Putra, anybody who worships Krishna, that this is my child. Mora Sakha, oh, this is my friend. Mora Pranapati, oh, Krishna is my husband. In this mood, those who worship me with pure intention, not asking anything in return. And sometimes even considering themselves to be better than me. Like Mother Yashoda. Uh, what does my Krishna know? What does Krishna know? <laughs> if, he, if I don't feed him, he will go hungry. <laughs> this is Mother Yashoda's. She's not thinking. He is Narayan. By his breathing, uh, the sweat, the transcendental perspiration of his breathing is the ocean on which he sleeps. And then by his breathing, millions of universes come from the pores of his body. And then he enters those universes and feeds all the living entities. Mother Yashoda is not thinking like this. She's thinking, if I don't feed him, he will become thin. He will become very thin. So therefore, it is my duty. Sometimes the friends are considering Krishna to be equal to them. And sometimes they think, wait a minute, we are better than you. You don't give instruction. We will instruct you and you better follow. And Krishna is saying that the whole world is offering obeisances to me and uh, asking benedictions out of me. And here in Brindavan, they are protecting me. Gopa means... Uh, to keep Gupta, keeping Krishna secret. When demons come, the friends protect Krishna by keeping Krishna behind them. <laughs> this is the Gopa mentality. <laughs> Gupta rakhte hain. They keep Krishna confidential. As a hidden secret, they protect Krishna. <laughs> so Krishna is saying, those who have this mood, Ei bhave ami hoy tahar adhi. I become completely controlled by this mood. So we are mentioning this. Because after Vasudev Maharaj got Krishna from Mathura to Brindavan and he got the baby girl back, then the baby girl kicked Kamsa on the head and said, the child that you're trying to search for is born somewhere else. Hmm? So that's a proof that Krishna actually appeared in Brindavan, somewhere else. <laughs> also, we can find in Srimad Bhagavatam, the Gopi Geet, the Gopis are saying, Jayati te dikam janmana brajaha shrayata indira shashwadatrahe. The gopis are saying 
हे कृष्ण जयति ते अधिकम वृंदावन हैज बिकम मोर ग्लोरियस वाय जन्मना व्रज बाय योर जन्म दे आर नॉट सेइंग मथुरा जन्मना व्रज बाय योर अपीयरेंस ते जन्मना हे कृष्ण ब्रज अधिकम जयति बाय योर बर्थ इन जन्म नॉट आविर्भाव नॉट अपीयरेंस बट जन्म it is described krishna came from the womb of mother yashoda and the umbilical cord was cut at gokul mahavan <laughs> he may have appeared with four hands in mathura in the prison house but our yashoda nandan uh, beautiful little nandan nandan shamsundar appeared in gokul mahavan so to go to krishna janma bhumi in mathura is wonderful it is wonderful and we must go and take darshan but uh, a brajbasi considers gokul mahavan as the appearance thali the appearance place of krishna that is uh, one point second point we can see that nandastu atmaja utpanne jata ahalad it has been described that nanda maharaj again from the shrimad bhagavatam it is described that nanda ahalad praptavan he he became very happy nanda maharaj why atmaja utpanne by the utpan by the appearance of whom atmaja now in sanskrit there are many words for son not s u n but s o n you can call him putra you can call him suta you can call him sunuhu you can call him atmaja and so and so forth the word atmaja means children generally are born from the body but that child whose dearest to the father and the mother is considered to have appeared from the soul atmaja atma means soul and ja means janma so nandastu atmaja utpanne bhagavatam describes krishna appeared uh, not just from the body but from the soul of nanda maharaj <laughs> so there is no doubt about krishna's appearance in vrindavan so vasudev and devaki continue to be in the prison please don't get confused about the whole discussion we are all discussing that in line with this source because this background is needed to understand the meeting of nanda and vasudev so vasudev maharaj and uh, devaki rani both continue to be in the prison and nanda maharaj on the other hand after krishna appeared he performed a nandotsav nanda ko anand bhayo jay ka nahi alal ki in braja so it is not difficult for kamsa kamsa was not a fool it is not difficult for kamsa maharaj to put these two things together one that the eighth child will be the cause of kamsa's death and he did come for the eighth child six he killed seventh was a miscarriage and then he came for the eighth and it was durga devi herself his presiding deity who told him he has appeared somewhere and kamsa knows that vasudev and nanda maharaj are related now for those of us who don't know the relation between uh, nanda and vasudev we can write down there was a very great king by the name devamida and devamida had two wives one was a kshatriyani a kshatriya wife and one was a vaishya wife hmm? of course at that time you can know that kings had many wives and they also had prominent wives we can see even in the past time of dasharath maharaj <laughs> how prominence between the wives and the queens even caused the supreme lord to go into the forest we can find this even in uh, the past time of chitraketu where the kings had multiple queens so devamida maharaj had multiple queens but two prominent ones one was a kshatriya queen and one was a vaishya queen from the kshatriya queen the son who appeared his name was surasen and from the vaishya queen the son who appeared his name was parjanya maharaj so devamida two wives kshatriya and vaishya with the kshatriya wife the son who appeared was surasen and with the vaishya wife the son who appeared was parjanya the son of surasen was vasudev maharaj and the son of parjanya maharaj was nand maharaj so vasudev maharaj and nand maharaj are related as first cousins as far as uh, brothers are concerned hmm? 
And also because Vasudev Maharaj is the son of Surasen, in this verse, dear devotees, he is called Shauri. The son of Surasen is Shauri. Hmm? That is the elaboration on one of the words of the source. We are coming to the other words as well. So therefore you can see Vasudev and Nanda both have spontaneous natural affection for Krishna because both are parents. Uh, Krishna was born to Nanda and he appeared to Vasudev. And because he was born to Nanda Maharaj, he is called Nanda Nandana. Namami Nanda Nandanam. And because he appeared to Vasudev, his name is Vasudev Krishna. Many times devotees get confused between the word Vasudev and Vasudev. Please note the father's name is Vasudev and the son Krishna, the son of Vasudev is called Vasudev. And many times you can see this usage in Shastra. Like Janak Maharaj's daughter is Janaki. Right? Prithu's daughter is Pritha. And Pritha's son is Parth. <laughs> so, in this way you can see so many derivations are found. Kunti's son is Kaunteya. So, Vasudev's son is Vasudev. So in this way, Nanda Maharaj and Vasudev Maharaj are related. So the point we were trying to mention is Kamsa, it's not difficult for him to fathom that Vasudev and Nanda are related. And uh, Durga Devi herself has said that Krishna has appeared somewhere. And there Nanda Maharaj is performing a big festival for the birth of a child. <laughs> so even us, we can put the pieces together and think that maybe that is the child. And somehow Vasudev has taken the child there. Right? So now comes a May plan to attack and bomb Brindavan to kill the child. It's just natural. So to protect his child, what Nanda Maharaj does is he goes to pay tax to Kamsa. Because a rich man, however rich he is, he always thinks of making more money. And he gets pacified by any proposal that gives him more money. And Kamsa was also um, <laughs> very desirous and greedy of um, making more money. That was his desire. So Nanda Maharaj, instead of paying monthly tax, he went with the money for the whole year. He paid annual tax. He went and gave surplus money to Kamsa just so that Kamsa will be very happy with him. And if Kamsa is very happy with him, Kamsa will think, I don't want to bomb that village where the king is so pious and he is bringing so much money. Because if I bomb him, it's like destroying the, the chicken who was giving golden hen, uh, golden eggs. You see the hen and the golden egg story. The man becomes very greedy and uh, the, <laughs> the chicken who's, or the hen who's giving uh, golden eggs every day, he thinks, well, let me just kill this hen and take all the golden eggs possible. But it doesn't work like that. So Kamsa may not think of bombing Brindavan because he may get more money in the future. And why will he, you know, jeopardize or spoil that proposal? So instead, he will be kind to Nanda so that more money comes in. So Nanda Maharaj walks all the way from Brindavan, comes to Mathura in the previous chapter of this Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam and comes and pays lots of tax to Kamsa. Gives him a lot of gold, gives him a lot of respect, a lot of silken cloth, ornaments, so that uh, Kamsa is pacified. Swastiyastu vishwasya khalaha prasidatam. Even... Um, Prahlad Maharaj has said, we should act in a way that the wicked are pacified. And he's saying out of his experience. Because his father troubled him a lot. And <laughs> he's saying, may you act in a way that the wicked and the envious be pacified. Give in to what they want. You know, if they want little money, keep the money. Don't trouble my bhajan. What we end up doing is we give our heart to this world and money to Krishna. We think that devotion means giving charity to Krishna, but we give our heart in this world. But instead, we should do the exact opposite. Give money to this world. They will be pacified. But give your heart to Krishna. Krishna will be happy. Man Prabhu ko or Tan Jagat ko. We should give our heart to Krishna and the body and the wealth to this world. But the point is, along with our heart, if we give our wealth also to Krishna, wonderful. No problem. 
But if we only give the wealth and we give our heart to this world, then very slow uh, advancement. So Nanda Maharaj, to pacify Kamsa, he brings in all the wealth. And after pacifying Kamsa, Kamsa is in a very good mood, <laughs> a very nice mood. So Nanda Maharaj feels very secure that his child, his family, his village is all well protected. Because he has come all the way to Mathura, he thought, let me just meet uh, Vasudev Maharaj also. Vasudev Maharaj comes out to meet him, but he comes alone. He doesn't bring Devaki Rani. Because Vasudev Maharaj, when he met Nanda Maharaj, now point to be noted is, Nanda Maharaj does not know about the child who was swapped in the middle of the night. So Nanda Maharaj is convinced that the child who was born to him is Krishna and surely enough. But he doesn't know that Vasudev Maharaj crossed the river and got Krishna in the middle of the night. So Nanda Maharaj thinks the child is his. Vasudev Maharaj knows the child is his. Vasudev Maharaj does not want Nanda Maharaj to know about the child uh, being swapped in the middle of the night. So when Vasudev Maharaj and Nanda Maharaj meet, they are brothers meeting, they are two fathers meeting, they are two devotees meeting. When they meet, Vasudev Maharaj asks Nanda Maharaj, how is your child Krishna? Vasudev Maharaj with a lot of hidden emotions in his heart, he is asking Nanda Maharaj. He doesn't even let the tear come out of his eye, protecting that. He is with folded palms asking Nanda Maharaj. Vasudev Maharaj is asking Nanda Maharaj. How was the celebration? How was the appearance? How is your little child Krishna? How does he look like? Now, it's very easy to understand why Vasudev Maharaj did not get Devaki Rani there. Because if Devaki Rani would have come there in the presence of Nanda Maharaj, with tears in her eyes, she would have asked, How is my Krishna? How is my child Krishna? Six of my children were murdered in front of my eyes. The seventh was a miscarriage. And the eighth who appeared in front of me, I could not even uh, press that child to my heart and cry with affection. Before that, the child was taken away by my husband to cross through the Jamuna uh, to Nanda Maharaj, to your home. So please tell me, how is my child? This is how a mother's heart is. So being sensitive of the circumstance, Vasudev Maharaj keeps Devaki in the prison and he comes out alone. Because Vasudev Maharaj has heard so many examples in the past of the loving nature of a mother's heart. Hmm. The most famous katha that was prominently heard during Krishna's time was Ramayana. It is described even Krishna heard the pastimes of Sri Ram. And the Ramayana is very famous for many reasons. But in the Ramayana, we can see the love that Kaikeyi has for her son, that she is ready to even ask benedictions to make her son a king. She is not able to hide her emotion, but ask Dasharat Maharaj for the boon that make my son the king. Hearing this Katha and remembering this Krishna Katha or Ram Katha, Vasudev Maharaj thinks, what if following the footsteps of Kaike, my wife Devaki also, for the protection of her own child, asks Nanda Maharaj for one benediction, please give my son back. The son who is in your playing, who's going to play in your courtyard, whom you think is your son, is actually my son. Please give him back. What's going to happen is it's going to make the whole situation very awkward from both sides. Because Nanda Maharaj will not agree. And even if he gives his child, he will not be happy. And let's say he doesn't give his child, but this thought, what Devaki said, will stay in his heart. And a doubt may come, wait a minute. I'm sure this child appeared from my wife's womb, uh, from Yashoda Rani's womb. But why would Devaki say something like that? Because she's such a chaste first class woman. Why would she make a point like that? So it will go in as a needle and stay in and multiply like a plow in the heart of Nanda Maharaj. And Vasudev does not want any complication. So being sensitive of his situation, Devaki's situation, Nanda Maharaj's situation, Vasudev comes out to meet Nanda Maharaj all by himself. And as they are speaking, they have been speaking for some time. 
And Vasudev Maharaj asked Nanda Maharaj, how is it that you have come here? And Nanda Maharaj mentions that, well, I came here to pay annual tax to Kamsa because, you know, I just wanted to keep him pacified. So Vasudev Maharaj, out of his experience in the past, Vasudev Maharaj knows Kamsa much better than anybody knows Kamsa. <laughs> Vasudev Maharaj has dealt with Kamsa even before his marriage. From the time Kamsa held the wife, uh, the hair of his wife, that is not Kamsa's wife, but Vasudev Maharaj's wife and Kamsa's sister, Devaki's hair. From that point, Vasudev Maharaj knows Kamsa very well. He has tried to counsel him and some people are ham nahi sudrenge camp. You know, they will, <laughs> they will never improve. So this was incorrigible. One of those examples that Kamsa was. So Nanda Maharaj was describing the heart of Kamsa. And he said, Kamsa is a nice person. I actually gave him a lot of wealth and he seems to be very pacified. Vasudev Maharaj told Nanda Maharaj at that time, don't buy in and trust this Kamsa. He will act like a gentleman and will become a mental man soon. He will go from gentleman to mental man to gentleman to mental man. He will go from gentle to being mental by the snap of the fingers, by the blink of the eye. So now he may seem to be gentle, but by the time you reach Brindavan, it's possible he has sent someone. So I want you to be safe. That is the context of both of their meeting. So here, now we read the translation again. My dear king, who is saying this? Shukadev Goswami is telling Parikshit Maharaj. My dear king, while Nanda Maharaj was on his way home, why was he returning home? He considered that what Vasudev had said could not be false or useless. Cannot be false or useless. Because Vasudev Maharaj has said that Kamsa is not a person who can be trusted. And he can send disturbances and demons and rakshasas and rakshasis all the time. So protect, oh Nanda, said Vasudev, protect your son. Protect your son. It's very important to speak the way we speak in the right context with the people whom we are with. When Krishna came to kidnap, kidnap Rukmini, um, it's described that when Rukmini came out of the beautiful, wonderful temple of Mother Parvati, just before her marriage to Shishupal. She was so beautiful. She garlanded Parvati Devi and prayed for blessings just before her marriage. And as she stepped out of the temple, all the kings who had come to attend the marriage of Rukmini and Shishupal, they all fainted looking at the beauty of Rukmini. And it was a wonderful opportunity for Krishna to take his chariot, drive it straight to Rukmini, take her hand, kidnap her and leave. He could have done that. But that's not fun. <laughs> Krishna waited for all the Kshatriyas to come back to life, back to consciousness, because Krishna wants to take on them and not steal Rukmini's hand when they're all unconscious. He wants them to come back to life come back to consciousness, and then he can take on them. And when they came back to life, they became conscious and awakened. Oh, that's when Krishna came. Very slowly, next to Rukmini, held the hand of Rukmini, pulled her onto the chariot. And Rukmini in the heart was thinking, oh, Krishna, we're surrounded by so many armies. What are we going to do? Krishna could have said, don't worry, my army is ready to fight. That's what he could have said. But what Krishna said, look, holding the chin of Rukmini, Krishna said, don't worry, your army is ready to fight. Immediately accepting Rukmini as his wife and whatever is his army is actually Rukmini's army. So it's very important to speak with sensitivity. So Vasudev Maharaj being sensitive to Nanda Maharaj says, protect your son. Because Kamsa uh, is a disturbed person. He can bring in disturbance. So Nanda Maharaj walks back. Thinking of this, he walks back from Mathura back to Brindavan. And on the way, he's thinking what Vasudev has spoken cannot be false. We continue. There must have been some danger or disturbances in Gokul Mahavan. As Nanda Maharaj thought 
about the danger for his beautiful son, Krishna. He was afraid and took shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Controller. Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport, Whenever there is danger, the pure devotee thinks of the protection and shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is also advised in the Bhagavad Gita, Anityam Asukham Lokam Imam Prapya Bhajaswamam. In this material world, there is danger at every step. Padam padam yatvi padam. Therefore, a devotee has no other recourse than to take shelter of the Lord at every step. This is so fascinating. Nanda Maharaj was actually taking steps. And at every step that Nanda was taking, he was thinking of his Lord. So Prabhupada is writing such a beautiful point that we should follow the footsteps of Nanda Maharaj. And every step in our life, the word step, has, every step has been played very wonderfully. Because every step in life means in all walks of life. But every step in Nanda Maharaj's perspective means the steps that he's taking towards his village. <laughs> Prabhupada writes that whenever there is any danger at every step in this world, we should try to think of Krishna. In the teachings of Queen Kunti, Prabhupada says that there must be danger because we have put ourselves in a dangerous situation by turning away from Krishna and being in this world. So Nanda Maharaj very wonderfully takes shelter of the Lord and how he does that, that we will see tomorrow. Gaurav Premanande Hari Hari Bol Granthraj Shri Madhvagotam Ki Jai Shri La Prabhupad Ki Jai Nitai Gaurav Premanande Hari Hari Thank you very much dear Amrinda Prabhu for such an amazing beginning of Katha. So dear devotees with the pace that we are going I'm sure the promise that Prabhuji made for 30 days is, uh, breaks and hopefully we'll have a longer Katha I believe so. So we are very grateful to you. And today we have a special guest who has joined us. So uh, I would request his guest Adi Gadar Prabhu to come online. And uh, Prabhu you are there? Yes. Yes, yes, Jai Kumar Prabhu. Yes, thank Hare you so Krishna. much. Please, we can. Yes, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, dear Amarinda Prabhu. We at ISKCON Atlanta feel very, very grateful that uh, you have chosen to give your association to all of us. And I request all the devotees to enthusiastically keep coming like this and joining every morning to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Very wonderful way to start our day at 7 a.m. with uh, Hari Katha from Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you, dear Amarinda Prabhu, and thank you, dear devotees, for joining. Hare Krishna. Thank you, dear Adi Gadadar Prabhu. The, the perfection and success of speaking Krishna Katha is to have Darshan of a Sadhu at the end. So Dhruva Maharaj's austerity fructified when he had darshan of the Lord. Prahlad Maharaj's austerity fructified when he had the darshan of the Lord. And Vyasadeva's austerity fructified when he had darshan of Narad Muni. So the, the fact that Krishna has accepted all of our services today is I'm getting chance to see you. Darshane pavitra karo e tumar Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. That's awesome. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Bro. Thank you very much, dear devotees. So we'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place on our Zoom temple. Please join in. And of course, uh, we started receiving questions. So Prabhuji will answer questions uh, hopefully on Sunday. We'll be just working out you know, the schedule and we'll, we'll let you know. So thank you so much. And now we all can unmute ourselves and pray our gratitude to his grace of Prabhu. Yeah. Uh, Krishna Prabhuji, God bless you with all his bhakti possible. Thank you, Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Dandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Adhe Radhe Hare Krishna Dandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna